Now see, Satan, he didn't even know what he was doing. And he leads this man and this woman to take of that fruit and to fall. And here comes God in the cool of the day. And he says, who told you you were naked? Who told Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat of? So Adam stands up like a man and takes full responsibility for the whole thing. He said, the woman you gave me. That's, that was my problem. And the woman, in great love for her husband, she says, he's right. She said, it was that serpent. And then he comes to the serpent. The serpent had nothing to say. Nothing to say. He's waiting for the judgment to come down now. Yeah. The hammer's going to fall now. We know. We witnessed it. We've witnessed it. We've seen the hammer of judgment fall from this God. So what does he say to him? What does he say? Right there. With everyone looking on, as it were, the whole humanity is looking on here. Because I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy you for what you've done here today. I'm going to bruise your head. Now you're going to bruise the seed's heel. The seed of the woman here, the one that you deceived, is going to give birth to the remedy. And I'm going to destroy you. See, he didn't get what he didn't get what he thought. Not at all. God promises to destroy the works of the devil. The thing that you've done here today, this work that you've done today, is going to be destroyed because I'm God and I'm not man. And I'm going to work my will in the midst of the earth, and there's nothing you can do about it, Lucifer. There's a sense in which the day you came into Christ, all your problems were solved. Every one of them. You just got to stay in long enough to realize it. Jesus is effectual. His work is effectual. If we stay in Christ, if we walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is that? The works of of the devil have been destroyed. Amen. He can't make you sin anymore. And we say, well, all right, he's going to destroy the works of the devil. That shouldn't take long. How long has it taken in your life? How long? Well, I would say as long as you have this container. He's going to keep manifesting himself. And as he manifests himself, it's going to keep destroying the works of the devil. Like I said, there's a sense in which it was all taken care of when you first came in. Well, I mean, you were given a new nature. You were given a new spirit. You had the capacity now to overcome when you were tried. You just didn't automatically just give in. But there's a lot more to it than that. The journey, it's more than starting. It's finishing. And along the way, he's... He's causing us to actually take the power that he has, appropriate it through the gospel, and the effects of that is eternal life. You know him whom you have believed in. And as you start knowing him better, speaking as a man, as you know him, well, the lie, see, it doesn't have any power over you then. When you see, well, this was just a lie. I don't have to smoke anymore. Where'd that come from? I don't have to drink anymore. Where'd that come from? Well, see, you saw that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. And what happened was, I don't have time for this nonsense. Well, what is that? He's destroyed the works of the devil. You say, I've, I've decided to give 100% of my time to the Lord. What happened? 
there was a time when you weren't giving 100% of your life to the Lord. You, you like held part of it back for your own self. What happened? He destroyed the works of the devil. You determined, you had a determination once to, um, you had an aspiration, a godly aspiration, and you followed through with it. You actually followed through with it. Well, how many people have had aspirations that they've never followed through with it? Why did you follow through with it? He's destroyed the works of the devil. Amen. Why did he do it? So you wouldn't have to serve sin any longer. No longer are you under bondage to serve sin. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, not maybe someday should be, is crucified with him. Yeah. It's done. Now we've got to realize it, though. This is, well, this is automatic. Well, it, it, it is? You're only going to walk with Christ as much as you can see him. That's it. You're not going to follow someone you can't see. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over who? Him. Now, are you in him? Well, then it doesn't have any more dominion over you. Amen. But it's only to the degree that you're in him. Are you walking in him? Well, then death doesn't have any dominion over you. For in that he died, he died in the sin once. In that he liveth, he liveth unto God. <laughs> so is he in the heavens right now? Yes, he is. Is he right now in the presence of God on your behalf? Well, if you're in him, then where are you at? Satan's works have not changed. Satan can't change. So Satan's works haven't changed. Now, as soon as he's cast into the lake of fire, that will be the last we hear about Satan. That will be the last we ever hear for all eternity. Now, does that sound good to you? Amen. Does that sound good to you? You will never again, never, have to hear the word, Satan. He'll be cast to the sides of the pit. They'll look on him narrowly. They'll say, is this the one that weakened the nations? This little puny? See, the thing is, if you could see him for what he really is, That's right. he's been destroyed. No longer does he have power over you. You don't have to do what he says anymore because Jesus destroyed him who had the power of death. That is the devil. He wants to separate you from God, but he doesn't have the power to do it anymore. But he still wants to do it. It's kind of like, you know, when you get like 60 years old and you wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this, and then your body says, yeah, you are? <laughs> you Really? But see, he, even though he's destroyed, he has a great desire. He's motivated by a great intention. He just can't fulfill any of them anymore. He wants to separate man from God by bringing them into the bondage of sin because he knows that if he can get you to sin, it will cause a separation between you and God. So today we live in a time when Satan says, it's okay. God really doesn't care if you sin. Don't you know that Jesus died to, to, for sin? So no longer is sin a problem. So you can sin and see, God, just get, God doesn't care anymore. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Amen. Well, now, does that mean that we can sin, that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. It's not reasonable to sin because Jesus has destroyed him that had the power of death. It's not reasonable for us to submit to a defeated enemy. Amen. He's defeated. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. Now I tell you, we who are in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh 
with the affections and the lust. 